What's up, YouTube? It's your favorite math teacher, Mr. Stevener here, coming at you with, well, another video. So, uh, before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're almost at a 100 subscribers, which is totally awesome. That means I can make content for you guys. I hope it's helping. Uh, at least that's when I made this video, it's 100 subscribers. Hopefully, years from now, it's a lot more than that. Uh, you probably clicked on this video uh, for two reasons. One, because you were supposed to, or... B, because you're curious, what in the world is a hanger diagram? <clears throat> you're right. That's a great question. So we're going to be solving equations today, okay? But we're going to be using a hanger diagram. And for those of you that are like, <laughs> what is this? And those parents, they're like, why are we changing math? We're not. I want to give you an example of what a hanger diagram is, okay? So first off, you have to understand an equation, which is separated by an equal sign. Uh, something like, let's give you an example so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, for example, if I said something like this. That's an equation that you would have to solve, right? And there are many methods to solve this. But again, we're concentrating on the hanger model, okay? Notice that is separated by an equal sign. So uh, don't worry, I'm bringing Tommy out. Yeah, you are. Right. Relax, Tommy, I'm bringing you out. But I want to show you guys this first so you can understand how to use a hanger model before I bring Tommy out. Um, with that in mind, these are separated by an equal sign. Okay, an equal sign, that means that this part of the equation, that's not what I tried to do, this part right here, the 6x plus 3, has to equal this side of the equation. So that means 21 and 6x plus 3 have to be the same thing. So whatever goes on over here, whatever this value of x is, it has to make this side equal to 21. That's the rule. So it's a lot like a hanger. If I hang a hanger on my finger just like this, notice it's balanced right? I have two uh, clips on either side, right? And it's balanced. And this would be hard to tell at first, but if I take one of those off, my hanger actually goes slightly up on this side. This weight is pulling it down, right? Because my scale isn't balanced, right? This side is no longer equal to this side, right? Well, when we go to solve, let me balance it. When we go to solve equations, what we want is we want a perfect balanced hanger. So give an example. So if I add another clip, this clip right here to this side, obviously what's going to happen is this thing's unbalanced, right? It drops down like that. Well, if I want to balance that out, there's two things I can do, right? I can either take the black uh, clip off, or I can add a clip of the same size to the other side. Now, I know that's a different color, but they're actually the same size. Notice it balanced out the hanger. Same here, right? I can take one of these orange ones and just... And it's going to slightly balance it, or sorry, unbalance it. Let's put it up here. Right, see how that's unbalanced, right? But the thing is, if I take it off, back to the same. One on here, tilted. One on here, totally tilted. You don't want that, right? So we are going to be talking about hanger models today to figure out how do I balance an equation and figure out exactly what a value of one clip would be. Or in this case, we're going to be looking at the value of x. <laughs> with that in mind, yeah, I just threw that across the room. With that in mind, we're going to take a look at what exactly is a hanger model. And we're going to work backwards. So to do that, I will need my friend Tommy. Tommy, you want to come over here? Hi, sure, dude. This sounds crazy. Hanger models? This is this is this is not like math I'm used to. This is weird. I know it's it's very different, and. Different is not always a bad thing. You'd be actually surprised, Tommy. Um, this actually helped me look at solving equations visually. Like I've, I've solved equations my whole life. This is actually kind of an interesting way to look at it. So we're going to start with this first hanger model. This right here is 2x plus 3 equals 5. Now that's an equation that there are many ways to solve. But the hanger model, we're going to solve it that way. So I want to point out, look, it has an x and an x, right? Yeah, it has two x's. Good, just like the question asks, it has two x's. It also has a one, a one, and a one. Why do you think it has those? Uh, because the one plus the one plus the one is three, and it's two x plus three. Good. Now notice, imagine this part is actually the hanger, right? This is the part they're talking about, right? The hanger model. Notice it's hanging. Ah, oh, I see it, yeah. Notice that on the other side of the hanger, there's one, two, three, four, and five. Oh, yeah, I get it. Okay. Our goal is to figure out, and this might be kind of an easy one on purpose, but 
our goal is to figure out like, well, what, what is the value of X going to be so that our hanger stays completely level and balanced. Okay. So we can solve that by doing some things. Okay. We can solve that by getting X by itself. That's our first goal. Whenever we are trying to solve an equation is isolating the variable or getting X by itself. Don't don't start singing. Don't want to be. No, don't want to be. No, we're not going to do that. X by itself. Thank you, Tommy. I wanted to sing. I wanted to sing. Okay, well, too bad. Anyway, where was I? Math. Oh, math. Okay. So what we're going to do is we need to get rid of these ones. Okay. So I'm going to cross these off. Now notice I got rid of them. Can you can you do that? Sure. As long as I balance it, because right now uh, this thing wouldn't be balanced. Right? Right. And keep in mind, how do I get rid of a one? Like, what's the real way to get rid of that? Uh, take away one? Exactly. Take away one. And so I really am taking away one. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to talk about that later. So tune into the video because that next thing of how to use these hanger models, that, that negative one thing is big. So tune in. Wait. That's coming later. But right now, I just want you to cross it off. But if I cross one off on this side of the hanger, Tommy, to make it balanced, what do I have to do? Cross off one on the other side? Yep, exactly. So one two, three. So I crossed off three over here and I crossed off three over here. So now I'm left with on this side are just my X's, correct? Yeah. And on this side, I've got two, correct? Yeah. Okay. So what that basically means now, your next part, now that X is, all the X's are by themselves on a hanger model, excuse me, what you're going to do is you're going to do what's left on this side has to match with your X's. So you're just going to match it up, kind of play like a matching game. So this X goes with this one, this X goes with this one, right? So notice both of these X's have no more things to match. So we know that X has to equal one. Now bear with me, this was a really easy, so sometimes it can be hard to see. This next one's gonna be trickier. Keep watching, keep watching. Okay, so what I mean by that is if I go back to my original problem and instead I make this, where we said the value of X is one, I make this box a one and this box a one, because that's the value of X. Notice I have five on this side and five on this side. Oh, interesting. All right, let's look at a different one though, because that one is extremely easy. So it, it can sometimes, because it's easy, it actually is difficult. Huh? Just trust me. Let's look at this one. This is 2x plus 3 equals 7. All right, so I'm going to draw my hanger model. Here we go. Here's my hanger. And what I'm going to do is I have how many x's on that left side, Tommy? Two. So I'm going to draw a circle with an X, right below it, another circle with an X. You with me so far? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now how many, uh, what's the number over here? Three. So I'm going to draw a one, another one, and it's okay if it's not a square, as long as you put the number inside. Another one. You with me? Yeah, go ahead. Keep going. So the other side over here, I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Okay, so what's weird about this one is this really looks unbalanced, um, but it's not. Why not? Because these X's, we don't know how much these X's weigh, but we can figure out how much they weigh in order to balance out our scale by doing what we did earlier, right? By crossing these off. Remember, you're really doing a minus one. Remember how I talked about that? Yeah, because a one take away one makes zero. So that's how you disappear, okay? But if I do take away one on this side, what do I have to do on this side? Take away one. Exactly. So I'm going to get rid of one, two, three. Okay. So how many are left over here, Tommy? Ah, uh, four. Exactly. So notice now my X's, how I said earlier, I'm left with X by itself. I need to match them up. So this X goes with this one. This X goes with the next one. Remember how I said I have to match them up? It's like dealing cards. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this X now has to go with this one. And this X has to go with oops, this one. So notice, this X goes with how many numbers? Uh, two. Yep, one and one, right? This one and this one. And this X also goes with how many numbers? Uh, two, two, yeah, two. So that means that my X, the value of X has to be what? Two. Oh, I get it. Yep, so if I go back to my original uh, hanger, right? And instead of drawing an X, now I'm going to put two ones because that's the value of x, I'll end up getting 7 when I do it all the way. I didn't kind of 
not have time for that. You end up getting seven. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that, exactly. That's just showing you. This is kind of like figuring out what goes with these X's. It's like an equal amount, all right? You with me? That's hanger model so far. I know that's tricky. I know that's different. No, it's, it's not that. It's not that. that. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at this one. Oh, man, 21. So the reason I wanted to show you this one is because the hanger model, although it can be efficient when it comes to understanding how a model looks, it's not always the easiest thing to draw. Yeah, that looks, that looks hard. It looks it does look hard. But keep in mind, same thing applies. I'm going to do six X's, but you might actually see it written uh, something like this. So X, 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 and X. You with me so far? Yeah, I think so. Tune in, guys, because I haven't got to the part where this can get tricky, so stay with me. So, I've also got one, or excuse me, three. There's another way you can write this. So notice this time they just wrote the number. Can you do that? You can do that. It is totally fine to do that. And on this side, just to write the number 21. That's totally okay. R really? Why? Well, because it's not very efficient to write a bunch of ones to write 21 of them, right? But I can still get rid of a three. How do I get rid of a three? Uh, cross it out? Yeah, but I can't just cross it out. It's not that simple. Oh, take away three. Yep, take away three. So really, when I cross this guy out, I'm taking away three. It's almost like I'm adding a negative three uh, circle to this side, but it's canceling, right? Yeah. So, but if I come over here, what else do I have to do? Oh, the same thing. So take away three. Yep, one of the big misconceptions, people are like, oh, let's take away 21 then. But you don't want to do that because that's not doing the same thing to both sides. Oh, okay. So I'm going to take away three over here. So it's like I'm adding a minus 3 cube. When you add a minus 3 cube, what's 21 take away 3? Uh, 18. Good. So this actually turns into a cube of 18, or a circle of 18, excuse me. Now, look at my x's. This gets a little easier to look at now, because I have six x's that need to be split up evenly amongst 18. Oh, so you would just divide. You would just divide. So 6x divided by 18, or 6 divided by 18 is 3. So that means each one of these x's is going to get three like this okay and look just look at those x's right now so three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen so those added up to eighteen are x's just like we wanted to oh but look if i go back to my original problem and i add another three that's what 21 oh my goodness exactly that's how you use the hanger model but it's not always that simple of course it isn't math is never that simple yeah, but the math is never that simple Sometimes you'll get a problem like this. Wait a second. Wait. There's a negative square. There is a negative square, which is totally okay. Hopefully you tuned in this far because you're going to know things other people don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think I am. Yep, you are. Check it out. This right here is really this problem. There's two x's. 2x minus 4 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. What do I do? Ah, great question. So this time, instead, how do I get rid of a negative one, Tommy? Uh, I don't... Add one? You would add one. You're right, because negative one plus one is zero, right? So I need it to add a box here, and add a box here, and add a box here, and add a box here. But keep in mind, when I add a box, those cancel, right? Yeah. So I added... What over here? Uh, you added one, two, three, four. Exactly, I added four. So if I'm going to add four on this side to get rid of my negative ones, what do I have to do on this side? Oh, add four. Exactly. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Huh. So then what? So then yeah. So now I've got two x's, right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11, 12. So I'm just going to take these two x's and I'm going to evenly divide them amongst 12. So I would do 12 divided by 2, which is what? Uh, 6. Good. So this is actually a value of 6. And this is a value of 6. Notice it adds up to 12, right? Yeah. So let's go back to my original problem. We know x is equal to 12, or excuse me, 6. So 6 and 6. Watch this. What's 6 plus 6, Tommy? Uh, 
12. Yep, minus 1. 11. Another one. 10. Another one. 9. Another one. 8. Good. 1, 2. So this side, you just told me when x is 6 is equal to 8. And how many was on this side? 8. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we just made, based on those hanger models, those equal by finding the value of x. Oh, man, this is interesting. Now, to be honest, guys, this may not be something you'll see. This might just be something that a teacher says, hey, use the hanger model, and you're like, you want to play hangman? What's hangman? It's a game. So with that in mind, this, I hope it helped. I know this may be something you guys never see, um, but it's really just meant to be problem solving, guys. This is working with equations. It's how to do something. Remember we talked about, it's not always, you don't need to always know why you use something, because if you know how, it doesn't, matter the why because eventually you'll figure it out yeah so work hard guys okay thanks this is kind of interesting well i appreciate it we're going to see a bunch of ways late uh soon how to solve equations all right guys talk to you later enjoy the video subscribe and don't forget to like the video